Welcome, to the Corp Vault channel. In this video we will discuss, Convault file system restore, along with browse and recover options. Please, like, share, comment or suggest. Subscribe for more videos, and, you can follow us on Instagram. Before you perform file system granular recovery, that is, file or folder level restore, verify if the client and its sub-client, has successful backup made for recovery. Browse to the client, and the sub-client, for which you wish to perform recovery. Right click. Select, Backup History. Backup History Filter Window, we have already discussed this window, in one of our other videos, we go with the default options, so click OK. This is the backup history of the sub-client. For a successful recovery, we need a job with status, completed. Denote the backup start time, and end time, as they are needed for point in time recovery. You might as well look at failed folders, and failed files column, for any failed items. If we want to perform recovery from a respective job, right click on the job, and select browse and restore. Browse and restore options window. Time range tab. If you notice, all the options here are grayed out. In the absolute time, you see the backup start time, and end time scene, and they are same as seen in the backup history. Let's check the other way to browse files. Right click on default backup set, under file system agent. All tasks. Select, browse and restore. This is the same browse and restore options window, which we just saw. The difference here is, you can choose the options you need for browse. Time range tab. Latest backup. This option is selected by default, and specifies that a browse operation must display data, from the most recent backup, that is, from now, back to the last full backup. Time range. When you select this option, you can specify whether the browse operation must display data, up to the specified date, start and end time. Data backed up after the specified date and time, will be omitted from the browse window. The time specified considers all the cycles, falling in this time range, in other words called, point in time recovery. Do note, this option is not supported by all agents. Absolute time. This option helps to enter, start time, and or, end time of backups to restore, along with the dates to choose from. Time zone, shows the time zone that applies to the start and end times of the backup. Start time, end time, these two settings define the window during which the data was backed up. Start time is the job start time, as seen here. If needed, you can only select the start time and leave the end time unselected. All data, on and after the selected time, would be considered for browse and restore. End time is the job end time, as seen here. Do note, the end time should be rounded up to the next whole minute. If needed, you can only select the end time, and leave the start time unselected. The backup tool considers all the cycles falling in the selected time range, and display the output. Relative time, helps to set a backup window, starting a number of days, weeks, months, or years, prior to the current date, and ending with the current date. The browse and restore operation will consider all cycles within the specified time. For this video, let's do restore by selecting only the end time. Advanced Options tab. This tab helps to show objects, to restore using following criteria. Show deleted items. This option is also referred as, image or no image browse. It specifies whether the operation, browses all the data, including deleted items, secured by all backup jobs, for the selected backup set, as of the specified browse times. When a time range is selected for the browse operation, a no image browse is performed and all deleted files across cycles are shown. Do note, this option is not supported by all agents. 
The main difference between image browse and no image browse is that deleted items are shown only by no image browse. Keep in mind that the display of deleted items depends on whether full backup transparency is enabled. If full backup transparency is disabled, which is the default, only those deleted items that existed back through the most recent full backup are shown. However, if full backup transparency is enabled, the deleted items shown includes those that existed during the time interval from initial index creation through the time being browsed. Include troubleshooting folders. If selected, for Windows file system agents, you can view and restore files that are hidden by the operating system. Browse from copy precedents. When selected, you see the list of primary and secondary copies associated with the data. You can choose to browse and restore from secondary copies by changing the precedence value. Include aged data in results. When selected, the browse will show data from aged jobs, which are still available in ComServeDB. Starting path. If you are aware of the file path, then you can mention the starting point for the browse operation. Page size. Specifies the number of objects to be displayed in the browse window. You can browse through each page list by selecting the appropriate page number in the restore window. Once the default is changed, it uses the same page size which was used in previous browse request until changed again. Use media agent. By default any media agent option is selected. Data can be restored from any compatible library and drive type in the com cell. By default, the system automatically identifies and restores data from any configured library in the com cell, even if the media is not available in the original library in which the backup operation was performed. This option allows you to select the media agent associated with the data you want to browse. Use proxy applies to block level sub clients. You can select the media agent where you want to mount the snapshot for live browse operations. By default, the client computer where the block level backup runs is selected as the proxy media agent. Use iSCSI server also applies to block level sub clients. Select the iSCSI server that maps the iSCSI LUNs to the proxy media agent. The iSCSI server and the proxy media agent must be running the same operating system. Filter tab. This tab helps to add filters to your browse results. Please note, this option is not supported by all agents. Criteria, helps add, different parameters for filtering the browse results. Click add, to select from a list of available filters. These are file system based filters, and are available only to file system agents. File name, enables viewing files with specified name pattern. Select file name filter. Type the file name in the text box. Please note, you can use wildcard characters to match specific file name patterns. During a browse operation, the file that matches the name pattern you provided are listed in the browse window. Use the delete option to delete the filter. Modify date enables viewing the file as per modification date. File size enables viewing files based on size range in KB, MB or GB. Stubbed object, enables viewing the stubbed files that were backed up. Contains, enables filtering content with specific wordings. This filter will work only if the content indexing engine is installed, and a content indexing job has been run, after the last backup job. File path, enter the complete path in the file path. You can browse and restore files that reside in the specified path. Deleted time, helps you to browse, or restore files based on the file's deletion time. If needed, you can use more than one filter at a time. List media, provides options for predicting media. List media window. List media for restore, within specified time range, specifies whether the list media operation, must display media containing data, required for restore operations in the specified date range. List media containing index, 
required for browse. Specifies whether the list media operation must display media containing the index required by the subsequent browse operation for the specified date range. Once done, click OK. Media window helps to view a list of media required for a restore or index restore operation. Export location shows the location of the media. If the media is available in a library, the media icon is displayed. And if the media is exported, the export location provided at the time of the export is displayed. Barcode or mount path lists the barcode or mount path associated with the media. Container displays the name of the container if the media was added to a container. Library is the name of the library in which media is physically located, or the library to which the exported media needs to be imported. Media type displays the media type either as disk or as tape. Storage policy, the name of the storage policy used to write to the media. Copy name, the name of the copy, that is, primary or secondary. Sub-client, the name of the sub-client, associated with the data. Copy precedence, displays the copy precedence number, corresponding to associated storage policy, and the storage policy copies. Content displays the type of the content stored in the media, that is, data, index, or index and data. Select all, use this option to select all media in the list. Prefetch, helps to perform, a prefetch operation for the media selected in the list. Please note that this operation is used for IP libraries. When you need to run a restore job, and if the tape has been migrated, this prefetch operation allows the restore of the tape, from physical to virtual, by reading a table of contents, instead of the entire tape. This process reduces the frequency of transfer, and thus shorten the waiting time. Recall media, helps to perform a recall media operation, for the media selected in the list. Click view content. Browse through, and select the file, or folder you wish to restore. List media and size. Use this option to view the media on which the data resides, along with the size of the data. Click Recover all selected. Restore options for all selected items. Use this window to control how the specified data has to be restored. Restore ACLs only. If selected, the backup access control lists will be applied to files that have been restored without their ACLs. If this option is not selected, then ACLs of the parent directory will be applied to the restored data. Restore data only. If selected, the files will be restored without their original access control lists. Files and folders will inherit the permissions of their parent folder or drive. Restore both data and ACLs. If selected, Data will be restored with its original access control lists. Unconditionally overwrite, only if target is a data archive or stub. If selected, the stub will be unconditionally overwritten, during restore. Overwrite files. Overwrite if file in backup is newer, this option will overwrite the existing file, with the file that was backed up, provided the backed up file is newer than the existing file. Also. If files or directories, whose names are different from those in the restore path, are restored. Unconditional overwrite. If selected, the restored data is unconditionally written to the destination location. Restore only if target exists. If selected, it will only restore files that currently exist in the restore path. Files that exist on the media, but not in the restore location will not be restored. Recreate mount points. This option allows for the creation of mount points. Restore destination. Destination client displays the name of the server to which the selected data will be restored. By default, data is restored to the same server from which it was backed up. To change the destination server, select one from the list. The list shows clients configured in the com cell and with operating systems that support the cross-platform restore operation, from this client. Any location, or server picked, 
apart from source server or source path, will be a out of place restore. Ensure the server is online and available for restore operation. Number of streams. It is the number of simultaneous data streams to use for the restore job. Use multiple nodes. This option is used to specify whether multiple nodes will be used for the restore job. This option gets enabled once you increase the number of streams greater than one. Use this option only when you want to perform restores to distributed or network file systems such as NFS and CIFS mounted across multiple machines. Restore to same folder. Restore operation will restore data to the same path from which it was backed up in the destination server. Disabling this option enables specify destination path and that means you can choose out of place restore path. The selected destination client is a media agent which is currently down for maintenance so let's select the source server itself for the recovery. Specify destination path. If you already know, then enter the path on the destination server to which the data will be restored. If the specified path does not exist, it will be created during the restore process. Click Browse. Select a path for the destination folder and click OK. If needed, you can create a folder for recovery. You can also enter the UNC path of a shared drive. Preserve source paths. Preserve end levels from end of the source path. Select number of levels at the end of the source path of the selected data. Easy to understand would be a level could be folder within folder like nested path. Remove end levels from beginning of the source path. Select this option to remove the specified number of levels from the beginning of the source path of the selected data. Impersonate user. Select this option when you are restoring to a UNC path. Enter the username and password for the user account, which has permissions to create files in the destination folder. Click Advanced. Advanced Restore Options. General tab. Automatically detect regular expressions. If selected, the system will recognize supported regular expressions, in other words, wildcards, in the specified source path. This does not apply to filter paths. Skip errors and continue. If enabled, restore jobs continue when media errors are encountered during the restore. This option also provides an output file that lists the full path names of the files that fail to restore. Use exact index. This option enables you to use the index associated with the backup operation performed at a specific time, or the latest index. By default, the system uses the index associated with the most recent backup operation, when you browse the data. Cross Hardware Restore. Select this option, when you are performing the cross hardware restore, of the system state. Validate only. Validation verifies that the backup data in the media agent is intact and usable for restores. This feature performs a quick check by comparing the data size received for each file and the total size of the file during the backup operation. If the two sizes do not match, the validation process fails the restore operation. This feature enables us to identify data loss issues and errors on the media agent before an actual restore operation starts. Startup tab. Use default priority. The default restore job priority is 66. Change priority. Select this option to modify the priority of a job between 0, which is highest priority, and 999 being the lowest priority. Startup in suspended state. Select this option to start the job in a suspended state. This job cannot run until the job is manually resumed in the job controller. Pre-post tab. Pre-recovery command. You can enter the path of the process to run before the restore. Use the browse button to search for and select the file or path. If there are spaces in the name or path, use quotation mark at the beginning and at the end of the path. Post recovery command. You can enter the path of the process to run after the restore. 
use the browse button to search for, and select the file or path. Please take care of spaces, by using quotation mark at the beginning, and at the end of the path. Run post restore process for all attempts. Select this option to run the process for all attempts to run the phase, including situations where the job phase is interrupted, suspended, or failed. Pre-post impersonation. Use local system account. Normally, the local system account has permissions to access all the data on the local computer. Impersonate user. Enter the user account, which has permission to execute the desired commands. Copy precedence tab. Restore from copy precedence. When selected, the system retrieves the data from the storage policy copy, with the specified copy precedence number. If the data was pruned from the primary copy, the system automatically retrieves the data from the other copies of the storage policy, starting with the copy, with the lowest copy precedence, and proceeding through the copies, with higher copy precedence. The table displays the storage policy, and the storage policy copies, corresponding to the copy precedence number. You can change the copy precedence from here. It's worth to note this. Data Path tab. You can select alternate data path for the restore or recovery operation. You can specify the media agent, library, drive pool, and drive, from which the restore operation must be performed. Use proxy. Use this option when you want to restore using a proxy server. The proxy server will be used to perform the restore operation. Use iSCSI server. Use this option when you want to restore using a iSCSI server. Paths or filters tab. Modify paths or filters. Source item. Displays the source path selected for the restore. Filter item or exclude item. You can add a folder, or path, or drive from the restore. Click add, to exclude manually, the path of data to be restored. Select an entry and, click delete, to remove the path, from the filter item. Job retry tab. Enable total running time. You can specify the maximum elapsed time, in hours and minutes, from the time that the restore job has started. When the specified elapsed time is reached, if the job is in the running state, it will continue, but if the job is not in the running state, then the job manager will kill the job. Kill running jobs when total running time expires. Use this option to kill the job, when the specified total running time has elapsed even if it is in running state. Enable number of retries. This is the number of times, that the job manager will attempt to restart the job. Once the maximum number of retry attempts has been reached, if the job has still not restarted successfully, job manager will kill the job. Map tab. You can specify the restore of individual files, to a specified destination using an external map file. Use map file. The map file provides the list of files to be restored, and the destination to which the files are to be restored. Map file path. Use the browse button to browse and select the appropriate map file. Restore unmapped files. Select this option, to restore the unmapped files that were selected for restore, to the specified restore destination. Rename all restore files with suffix. Specifies to restore the file with a suffix when the file name is already available in the destination folder. For example, if you are restoring a file with the name, program.txt, and the file is already available in the destination folder, then the file is restored as, program underscore suffix txt. Please note, for Windows platforms, this suffix is appended to the file name, before the file extension, and for Unix or Macintosh platforms, the suffix is appended after the extension. Browse Options tab. Restore deleted items. If enabled, the restore operation will include data, that was secured during all backup operations, including deleted items. Use the start, and end time, to browse data within a specified time zone, and time threshold. Alert tab. You can add an alert for this restore job, for successful restore, or failure. Once done click OK.
Job Initiation tab. You can either start the Restore job immediately, or schedule it for later. Once done, click OK to start the Restore. You should see the Restore job in the Job Controller. You can double click the job for details. Progress tab should show the job progress. Once the data transfer start, you would see more info, like currently restoring file or folder, average restore throughput, skipped count, failed count, number of files restored, etc. General tab will give the info related to restore job start time, total number of files to be restored, source server, destination server, etc. Restore completed successfully. Let's review the job logs. Right click on the job. View logs. For the job. It might take some time for the logs to populate, so please be patient. If the logs are split in multiple pages, then view all would help to bring them all in one page. Restore is successful. Here you see the number of files successfully restored, skipped, failed, etc. This info is in startrestore.log. All options selected for the restore can be reviewed here. Job Manager log provides the job start time and phases it went through, along with job status, as in completed or failed. FS Index Restore Log provides information about index and if index restore was performed for this restore. As you know CVD is responsible for communication, so all connectivity related messages are logged under it. CL Restore Log It contains restore parameters, restore progress, along with restore speeds, to access and recover data. We will end this video here. Do subscribe to the channel for more videos, if not already done so. Do subscribe for more videos.